So yeah, good morning, everyone in Kalimera. Uh, thanks very much for the invitation to speak at this uh, national workshop, uh, this Open Access Week event uh, organized by the University of, of Cyprus. Uh, I will be providing an update on this new initiative uh, from the European Commission and the Open Air projects, namely the uh, Open Air FP7 post grant Open Access Pilot. As you see on the title of the presentation, uh, this is an initiative aiming to fund open access coasts, which is not the same as APCs, although it will be uh, APCs what we will mostly fund. There will be uh, other uh, opportunities for funding, which I will go through right now. Uh, especially, I would like to make emphasis on the APC equivalent funding mechanism uh, that we're putting together. This will be at the end of the presentation. So uh, what I will do is I will provide an introduction uh, on the uh, initiative, how it, how it works, what, uh, what its uh, policy, uh, policy guidelines are, and uh, I will also show some early stage results that we are collecting. Uh, we are now nearly five months into, uh, into this pilot, since it was launched at the end of May uh, this year. And we have already started collecting interesting results. Uh, then our, after uh, showing you what we're doing and what, what this, these results are, I will be uh, briefly describing this uh, uh, APC equivalent funding mechanism uh, aiming to fund uh, APC free uh, open access journals. So it's it's not just it's it, this is about gold open access, uh, which is not just about APCs and BPCs, book processing charges for books. So uh, let's start by uh, looking into what this initiative is. Uh, I presume most of you may have already heard about this. Uh, I'm anyway. Uh, providing a, a brief introduction to this, hopefully aiming to reach uh, out to some researchers in, in the audience. Um, this is a, a two-year initiative uh, to provide funding to cover the open access publishing fees. Uh, it, doesn't say, it doesn't say APCs, it doesn't say BPCs, it includes both of them, uh, for publications arising from finished FP7 projects. So this is just for FP7 projects. This is a pilot, this is a test uh, to see if we can make this funding work out for projects which having been, having finished already, have no longer any, uh, any uh, project grants, any, any money to pay for their uh, publications uh, to be made available open access. The budget for this initiative is 4 million euros, uh, which should cover the uh, open access publishing fees for over 8,000 finished FP7 projects. Uh, this is not a large budget. Uh, initiatives like uh, the Gold Open Access Funds made available by the Wellcome Trust or RCUK in, in the UK are uh, significantly higher than this. Uh, and we're trying to cover um, the whole continent and, and neighboring countries. So. Uh, there will be some limitations on uh, how to apply this funding that I will go through uh, right away. As I said, the pilot uh, will last for a maximum of two years. So this is until April the, April the 30th, 2017. The official uh, date of launch for the initiative was May uh, the 1st, 2015. So it's two years unless we spend all the money uh, before that time. Uh, which is not looking likely at the moment, I must say. Uh, so it, it will grow, certainly, but it, it, it looks like uh, it, it will run for its full two years. These are the requirements for eligibility for funding. Um, so the policy guidelines, as, as we have called them. There is a URL at the bottom of the slide showing, uh, uh, linking to the page where the full policy guidelines are collected. Um, this is just a summary with the main aspects of uh, these requirements for, for, for funding. Uh, in terms of uh, project eligibility, the projects should have finished, of course, this is a post-grant initiative, but no longer than two years ago, at the moment, uh, the funding request is submitted. 
Uh, this is to ensure that there is a link still uh, between the publication and the project activity. Uh, it's a little bit artificial, of course, but uh, yeah, it's it's reasonable to to uh, assume that two years is 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 a time that that will ensure this this link. Uh, as a consequence of this uh, uh, limited budget I mentioned, there will be a maximum of three funded publications per project. Yeah, uh, this will include uh, research articles and uh, book chapters and, and books, so monographs, edited volumes, and conference proceedings, as long as they are peer reviewed. Yeah, any uh, publication that collects funding from this initiative must be peer reviewed. Um, then, uh, ideally, we should be collecting the funding requests at acceptance time for a manuscript. This is uh, mainly for an article, uh, but uh, also for, for uh, uh, proposals for, for funding books. Uh, they should be submitted uh, once the publication has been accepted, because this is when we will know how much uh, the pilot is, is expected to fund, uh, to, to, to pay for, for a given uh, open access publishing fee, not before. Uh, this said, keeping in mind that the pilot was launched as of uh, May 1st, May the 1st this year, as I said, uh, if uh, articles uh, were accepted after May the 1st and, and their invoice has already been paid uh, by either the author or the institution, these payments are eligible for a reimbursement. Yeah, so uh, we will, we, we're more keen to uh, take uh, funding requests at acceptance time uh, because that means we can take the invoices directly from the publisher and not, uh, and, and we won't need to uh, engage in time consuming uh, reimbursement processes where, where the administrative staff from the university needs, uh, needs to also uh, become involved in. Uh, but as I said, uh, publications uh, accepted after May the 1st, 2015 are also eligible, even if the, uh, the invoice has already been paid. So uh, this will run under a funding cap. So this is also a, a, a part of the constraints. Uh, there will be a maximum of 2,000 euros uh, funding for research articles or book chapters or uh, contributions to conference proceedings and uh, of 6,000 euros for uh, books, for monographs, for edited volumes. It doesn't mean the pilot cannot fund higher uh, APCs, higher BPCs, but in case we collect a funding request for a higher one, we will just fund the maximum we're allowed to fund. Yeah, the rest will need to come from somewhere else. Uh, finally, in, in this kind of policies, in a nutshell, uh, the final version of the funded output must be deposited in an open air compliant open access repository, ideally Zenodo, uh, the, the uh, catch all open air repository. Um, the final version is not just a PDF, this is another uh, item in the policy guidelines. There needs to be uh, an XML version as well as the PDF one. Um, ideally an XML, it, uh, any version that allows text and data mining will do. Uh, XML is, is becoming very quickly uh, the, the standard one. As I said, the, the full guidelines are available uh, in, uh, at that URL below, uh, I mean at, at the bottom of the screen, and uh, are you welcome to, to have a look at, at, at those. How to apply for funding? Uh, this is described in, in this slide. Uh, a system for collecting and processing funding requests has been set up by OpenAir for, uh, for this, for this FP7 post-grant open access pilot. Uh, again, the URL is featured on the slide. It's a slightly light uh, color, uh, but I hope you will be able to, to check it. Otherwise, if you if you Google it, you, you will be able to, to reach this system. This system requires uh, previous registration, right? So uh, you will need to get registered uh, in order to be able to apply for funding. Although uh, on, on this uh, screenshot you see uh, of the homepage, you are allowed to check the eligibility for a given FP7 project uh, directly on the homepage. 
through an API without registering. Yeah? So that is a very uh, easily reachable uh, feature uh, for this system. Um, the way we want to run this is this system uh, should get fine-tuned as we, as we go and ideally get close to being able to run it on its own. So uh, it, it should be as user-friendly as possible so that a researcher that applies for funding will very easily be able to deliver the information. Uh, we will see what information this is on the next slide. Uh, and not uh, require, ideally not require too much support because yeah, the, the uh, size of this initiative is, is quite large, as, as you can imagine. This is a, an insight on how this system works. Uh, when a funding request is submitted, um, the submitter, who, who can be the researcher, uh, researcher him or herself, or uh, the library, the research office, and open access uh, units at an institution submitting a request on behalf of a researcher, uh, will need to provide information on four main aspects. First one is uh, the identity, the, the researcher, the person, uh, which will be there already uh, because of the previous registration. Second one will be the project information. Uh, so we need to check uh, that uh, the FP7 project is eligible, that uh, the institution where the request is coming from is either the coordinator or, the, or, or, a, par or a project partner. Uh, what the end date is for this project. Uh, all this will be automatically populated in the system when the uh, project grant number or the project acronym is typed in in the uh, text box. Then a third, um, a third uh, screen, a third form will collect the data for the publication. Uh, so if a DOI is available for an article, for instance, and the DOI has been already shared, uh, by the publisher with Crossref, uh, the system will also be able to automatically resolve this DOI and collect all the metadata and, and automatically populate the system. This is the kind of user friendliness I was, I was mentioning earlier. Uh, being uh, submitted at, at a manuscript acceptance time, it will often be the case that the DOI is not there yet in which case the information will, be, uh, uh, will, will need to be manually uh, typed in for, for the article, for the book, uh, including fields like yeah, uh, the title, the uh, journal, uh, the uh, nominal APC, or I mean, the nominal APC will be uh, displayed by the system. The author will be required or asked to provide the actual APC, the real uh, 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 the fee that, that uh, a journal or, or a book publisher will, will ask for, for a given publication. And finally, uh, there is an accounting uh, form, uh, a fourth uh, form to, to complete, where the invoice will uh, need to be uh, uploaded into. Uh, there is a message, an important uh, recommendation there on the slide, uh, to please uh, submit the request upon completion of the publication data without waiting for an invoice to arrive. So if you have uh, collected an accepted manuscript uh, with, a, with, an, with, a, with a fully open access journal, I think I didn't mention this in my uh, uh, summary of the policy guidelines, hybrid journals are not eligible for funding uh, under this initiative. So it, might, it needs to be a fully open access journal. Uh, meaning that, yeah, the, the, there is no subscription business model behind this journal. Uh, if you uh, have an accepted manuscript and you submit a request, you may wish to wait for the invoice to arrive before uh, actually submitting the, the request. But uh, then if it happens to be a, a hybrid journal, uh, then the request will be rejected uh, and uh, a precious amount of time has been wasted waiting for the invoice to arrive for a request that wasn't eligible uh, from the very beginning. That time could have been used in trying to find alternative sources of funding. So it's, it's much better not to wait uh, for uh, an invoice to arrive, to submit the request as soon as we have the data for the article, for the publication, uh, and, and then wait for an approval from, from ourselves, from the system, before proceeding to, to submit the final request with, with the invoice. 
This is uh, some uh, early figures on uh, the system registrations. So as, as I mentioned, uh, there needs to be a, re a previous registration in the system in order to be able to uh, submit a funding request. These are the data as of October the 18th, very, very recently, uh, four and a half, approximately four and a half months after uh, the pilot was launched. You can see there are two uh, interesting figures, uh, registered users by user profile, so research, researcher profile, library staff, which includes any institutional staff, also research offices, uh, any other kind of unit, and project coordinator. You can see, yeah, of course, uh, researchers are, are the largest uh, uh, group in here, including project coordinators in them, but there is also a significant uh, amount of uh, institutions already uh, interested in providing support to, to their researchers. We have nearly four, uh, 400 registered users so far, which is, which is quite a good result. Uh, there is an analysis of uh, the registered users by na uh, nationality as well. You can see three large countries topping uh, the list, so the UK, Spain, Germany. Uh, with with uh, a rather large number of registered users, then uh, a number of, of other countries with yeah uh, uh, significant uh, number of registered users as well, and then Cyprus uh, has one registered user at the moment, which is uh, which is uh, the library uh, hosting uh, this event today at the moment. So um, yeah, there is there is clearly room for, for improvement there. This is the first indicator we're using to test um, the success of the pilot implementation uh, by country. Yeah, you can see countries um, where, where Gold Open Access is already uh, a, a, a business model in operation. So the UK, uh, Germany, the Netherlands are, are featuring well there. But it's interesting to see countries where gold open access is not uh, so well implemented yet. So Spain, Italy, Greece are also topping uh, the list, uh, even if, if there's not so much awareness about around uh, gold open access in these countries. One important uh, aspect uh, on how to apply for funding, this is a four-step uh, description. I have already described most of it. The most important additional aspect to keep in mind is number four. In order to be uh, uh, processable by our accounting office for, for, from OpenAir, the invoice needs to be issued to OpenAir, to Athena Research Center in, in Athens. Uh, otherwise, we cannot, we cannot pay it. Uh, we, need to, we need it to be issued to ourselves in order for it to be accountable to the uh, European Commission auditors in case there would be an audit. Uh, so this is again a reason for submitting the request as soon as publication data are available, so that uh, yeah it will be possible to tell the res to tell the publishers that they should please issue the invoice uh, to Athena Research Center. The details are uh, on the slide: the address, the VAT number, etc. Some uh, quickly, some early outcomes, uh, four months after uh, the pilot was launched, so as of September the 30th, uh, there are 52 granted uh, funding requests at the moment, uh, which is not a huge amount of them, but it's, it's starting to, to take off the, the initiative. Most of them, as you see, are for journal articles, but there are also a few of them for books, which is good news. We would like the distribution across document types, across countries, across disciplines to be as balanced as possible. Um, this is the um, uh, ranking per country uh, for, for this uh, granted funding request so far. Um, the classification per country is a little bit tricky, as, as you can imagine. This is European projects with partners in, in many different countries. What we're using to classify this is uh, the country uh, from the institution where the funding request comes from, you know, the uh, institution with which the uh, researcher who makes the request uh, is affiliated with. Yeah? So it's just a criteria that there might be other ones, and, and, and we will see there are, in fact, other ones. Uh, according to this, uh, we can see most 
uh, fun granted funding requests are coming from two countries, uh, namely the UK and Spain so far, um, which is interesting because, yeah, again, we could tend to think that, okay, the UK is a country where gold open access is, is very well implemented at the moment, so it's, it's, it's expectable that many funding, many eligible funding requests will arrive from the UK, but then Spain is a little bit of a, an exception in this regard, uh, because um, gold is not so big in, in Spain. And despite that, uh, thanks to uh, uh, an effective dissemination in, in, in the country, uh, we have uh, quite a number of, 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 re of granted requests. Other than that, uh, you can see um, quite a number of countries in there, but there's also quite a number of countries which are not in there yet. Yeah, so uh, keeping an eye on just the EU, uh, we have, I think, 12 countries at, uh, in there, so it means there are quite a number of them that uh, haven't yet uh, submitted any uh, accepted funding request. This said, we, we're trying to uh, tailor our dissemination activity uh, for for this for this FP7 post grant open access pilot in order to address precisely these these gaps we can see uh, happening in, in in specific geographic areas with Eastern Europe being Central and Eastern Europe being uh, probably the largest so it's it's just hungry uh, in there from from uh, Central Eastern European countries. More interesting uh, early outcomes for, for the initiative is the list of, uh, let's, let's call it the most popular publishers. So what publishers the granted funding requests have been awarded to. Um, this is uh, purely out of the uh, author's preferences. Right? So uh, keeping in mind that it needs to be a fully open access journal. So this is not just for journals. So you can see Ubiquity Press there, but uh, it's most it's mostly for journals, as as we saw earlier. Uh, interesting uh, aspect here to see that uh, Nature Macmillan are topping this list, although. Uh, they're not a fully open access publisher. Uh, they have very popular journals that are fully open access, and authors are particularly attracted by by these. It seems it's it's very early days yet, but uh, it's starting to consolidate. Uh, you can see that the previous position we were producing reports every two months, and, and Nature was topping the the list uh, two months ago as well, as of uh, July the 31st. Then uh, you have Copernicus, Frontiers, uh, PLOS, Biomed Central, uh, MDPI. You have the regular, uh, the usual suspects, let's call it that way, uh, for uh, fully open access publishers. Uh, we have Wiley there, which is not, um, which is again a, a mixed uh, publisher. Uh, you can probably realize which publishers are not on the list, which is also an interesting thing. Quite briefly, uh, outcomes with regard to projects. I mentioned the classification per country uh, was a little bit tricky. Uh, the, there is uh, a graph here showing the country distribution for a coordinator, for project coordinator for accepted funding requests, which looks reasonably similar to the one I showed earlier, but uh, there are significant differences. For instance, France wasn't, uh, is not uh, in, in the list of accepted funding requests by country, but it, it is indeed with four uh, project coordinations, uh, funded project coordinations. It is in here, Belgium as well. So th there are differences there that seem to hint at uh, flaws in the dissemination uh, we're collecting. So where, where you have many projects that are getting funded but no requests arriving. Uh, that means requests are arriving from elsewhere, uh, where they could perfectly well arrive from, from the project coordination, uh, which means that, uh, yeah, there, there, there probably needs to be a little bit more effort on um, the dissemination bit. Um, this uh, limitation of three publications per project maximum that I mentioned earlier uh, seemed a little bit unfair when, when discussing the policy guidelines for this initiative. We have many projects that are just single partner projects uh, for, for whom three publications is a lot. We have then projects with 60 partners for which three publications is nearly nothing. 
So we are interested in seeing how many partners uh, the, the FP7 projects we're funding have. And you can see the distribution there showing that it's most of them uh, mid-sized projects with six to 15 partners, which means it's okay. Uh, besides this, just one project so far, uh, this Converge project uh, coordinated in Bristol has exhausted its uh, maximum of three fundable publication per project. As I said, uh, there is a requirement in the policy guidelines for the initiative to deposit the uh, PDF and XML, ideally, uh, versions of the published article or um, book in uh, an open air compliant repository, ideally Zenodo. This is the collection that uh, has been created in Zenodo in order to deposit um, the uh, outputs, the, the funded articles and books from this FP7 project, from FP7 post-grant uh, open access pilot, sorry. Um, it doesn't mean the uh, articles cannot be filed in, in an institutional repository. Uh, the good thing about having them all here is that we can include uh, information at metadata element on how much the paid APC has been for a given article. Uh, we have the old metric uh, donuts in there. Um, we have the uh, acknowledgement for the project. So uh, having all of this together allows uh, a user to collect a, a, an insight on what this uh, initiative is funding by discipline, by publisher, uh, et cetera. So uh, we, we think it's, it's, it's useful to, to have uh, this in here. Then uh, the paid APCs, just restricting ourselves to our general articles. At the moment, the average APC uh, as of September the 30th is 1,350 euros, which is a very much exactly the same value we collected two months ago. So this is uh, steady as, as, as an average APC. You can see the distribution, the, the histogram on, on the slides. We have a number of uh, paid APCs in the highest interval, so uh, meaning yeah, the maximum funding uh, awarded, but we do also have a number of uh, paid APCs below 1,000 euros that are uh, keeping the, the average value steady. The standard deviation is, of course, growing as, as we go because yeah, the, the uh, range of APCs we're paying for is, is widening. And then finally, I will move on to this uh, APC equivalent funding mechanism. As I said at the beginning, uh, gold open access is not just about paying APCs or BPCs to publishers. Uh, the gold, uh, we, we need, when, when implementing a, a gold open access initiative, we need to keep in mind that over two thirds of the journals uh, are stored in the DOAJ and the Directory of Open Access Journals charge no APCs to their uh, authors. Uh, so we want to implement some funding mechanism that will support these APC-free journals as well. Uh, since we cannot pay for APCs because there's not such a model in place and we don't, we, we don't want them to have this model, we don't ask them to implement this model, what we will fund is uh, some uh, technical improvements in the publishing workflows at uh, these APC open access journals. So we would like to uh, help uh, strengthening the uh, uh, publishing workflows, the, the, the technical features for these platforms, uh, hopefully allowing them to collect uh, better submissions and, and a larger number of submissions and Im improving to uh, uh, contributing to reinforce the infrastructure in, in terms of uh, publishing. There are two main st uh, challenge to tackle uh, under this approach. The first one is to define the whole funding mechanism as such. There is no uh, previous um, example for this. So we need to define uh, what to fund exactly, uh, how, to fund, how to fund it, if, if we can collect invoices for what exactly, how much exactly, uh, whom to fund, and what indicators uh, to use to actually account for uh, the, the technical improvement as such. So this is underway at the moment. There are discussions with a number of uh, APC-free open access journal uh, platforms or editors when there are 
uh, standalone journals such as the Open Library of Humanities in the UK, uh, Revista Stasic in Spain, EKT ePublishing in, in Athens as well. Um, there is a, a Croatian, a very large Croatian uh, APC free open access journal uh, platform as well. And then we're talking to individual uh, journal editors to, to try to see what these journals would need to get funding for. Yeah. The second and even larger uh, challenge this, this alternative funding mechanism poses is uh, making sure that once the funding mechanism is in place, the eligible submissions and uh, uh, accepted manuscripts will arrive because uh, otherwise the funding will not happen as such. So the uh, uh, requirements for, for funding are the same that will apply to uh, APC-based journals. Uh, only, yeah, we are not sure how successful these uh, APC-free open access journals uh, will be in collecting eligible uh, submissions uh, that, that will allow uh, the funding to, 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 to take place as such. We think there's going to be important differences across disciplines on that. Uh, probably SSH journals will be able to collect um, FP7 funded uh, submissions. We are not so sure about STM, but it's worth examining it anyway. Uh, finally, my last slide is a list of these uh, fundable technical enhancements that we have put together so far uh, in our, through our conversations with these uh, APC-free open access journal, uh, uh, journals and journal platforms I've mentioned earlier. Um, the, the, the first one, the main one possibly, is collecting funder information uh, in the appropriate uh, metadata elements for the uh, journal articles. This is not always there and this is absolutely critical in order for a funder like, like ourselves to be able to track um, the, the uh, publications that, that, that we have funded. Uh, also, this should ideally be done in a, in a retrospective way, if possible. Uh, additional fundable improvements are our registration in ERI Plus or the DOAJ, these uh, directories of, of open access journals where, where this is not available, uh, becoming harvested by Open Air and the DOAJ at article level. Um, improving open access advocacy towards authors, uh, including the dissemination of the pilot, so advertising the journal, and this is in order to tackle this challenge I mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, we need to collect eligible submissions in order for the funding to, to happen. Uh, OJS is uh, a, a well-implemented system at the moment, but there are modules in OJS that are often uh, uh, not there yet, so this, this could also be uh, an and a fundable improvement, including the references in machine-readable formats, uh, and then uh, suggestions implementing ORCIDs, implementing old metrics as, as part of the, the tools that the journal will, will offer. We, we are hoping that there will be interest for this, especially in, in countries where there are discussions on, on, on whether gold uh, is, is an acceptable model, a sustainable model, uh, so APC-based gold, I should say. Um, and yes, to finish, let me mention uh, that in Cyprus, uh, I, there hasn't been much uh, mentioned to Cyprus in, in the whole presentation, but there is this, um, sorry, this initiative at uh, your colleagues, the Cyprus University of Technology, where uh, an open access fund, an institutional open access fund is available. Uh, this is... Uh, Quite an exception uh, in in southern European countries, uh, in that the this uh, institutional uh, gold open access fund is is actually funded by by a company uh, as part of the uh, yes, uh, corporate social responsibility, which is uh, quite unusual. Uh, I think you're you're lucky to to have this uh, kind of commitment uh, over there. And uh, yeah, this seems to show that yeah, researchers are already uh, practicing this, this model for, for uh, collecting funding for, for their APCs. And we're hoping that uh, the workflows that are 
possibly being already applied at CUT can be further extended to, to other institutions in order to benefit uh, researchers mainly. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll happy, I'm happy to take any questions now. Thank you.